So earlier this year, I picked up the Red Komodo 6K. I saw a really good deal for it. I pulled the trigger, moved some things around, no longer have my FX3, but I have the Red Komodo 6K. So for someone who shoots a lot of YouTube videos, a lot of short form, just wanted to give my experience, my pros, my cons of owning this camera. So let's go over them. Let's start off with positives. This is a 6K camera versus the FX3 and FX30, which are 4K. And now the resolution isn't the biggest pro. You can tell a little bit of a difference, but not much between 6K and 4K. What I do like about the 6K is I can now punch in and not lose any resolution when I need to. So for any zoom ins or if I need to readjust, I still export in 4K, but it's really helpful to have that extra resolution, again, just for cropping and doing any zoom ins. So next thing I love about the Red Komodo is that it is a video camera and a video camera only. So you don't have to go through the menu and have to find the video settings. All the settings, all the menus are dedicated to video. I love that it has the 180 degree shutter angle. I love that it has false color, ProRes, R3D RAW. So again, one of the positives, I only have to worry about videos and video only. So next positive is R3D RAW. R3D is amazing to work with. It's so flexible. It can get some really good images and the Red Komodo gets really good images straight out of camera. One of the best things about this camera is just working with that R3D, being able to push it back and forth however you need to, to get an excellent image. I love that this camera has ProRes as well. Now, I haven't really been using ProRes at all and some of you may say that there's no point of owning a Red Komodo if you're just gonna use ProRes, which I kind of agree with but also I shoot a lot of YouTube videos and short form content for the Sin City Bartender so that's a whole dedicated day of shooting non-stop YouTube videos. We have a dedicated studio with studio lights, everything is set up perfectly, so sometimes we don't need our 3D RAW and ProRes is perfect enough and if it can save me a little bit of storage space as well then I think I'm gonna start using it. I haven't really experimented with it too much. I believe it can shoot 4K downsampled 4K, so there is no crop, and 2K. So I'll probably be testing some ProRes and see how that goes. One of the biggest positives about this camera are the battery options. So you can use the normal brick batteries. I have two of these and I love that these are hot swappable. So if I have one on there and it's getting close to dying, I can switch it out pull out the one that's about to die and go charge this one while I use the other. And I can get probably an hour, maybe a little bit more out of each one of these. So I never have to power down the camera if I just switch them out. Also, you have V-mount options. So I have a V-mount battery plate that attaches straight to the camera and then I can put on a V-mount battery that gives me like two to three hours just depending on how much I'm using the camera. And I typically don't shut it down unless I have to switch V-mount batteries, which is the only downside. I don't have the cord that plugs in straight to the power for the red Komodo. So I do shut down the Komodo, switch out V-mount batteries, and then turn it back on. But I do love how seamless V-mount batteries fit on the red Komodo. It almost seems like it's part of the camera. You don't have to have rails or a giant rig in order to rig up the V-mount battery. It just fits perfectly. It is a little bit taller than the body of the camera, but honestly, it works perfect. Lastly, and definitely least important, is I think this camera looks really, really good, at least to me. And I know it's not important at all, but it's just nice to have something that I enjoy holding, that I enjoy working with, and that I enjoy looking at. And I do have the Stormtrooper version. I have been thinking about getting a skin for it. I know people really hate on those, but some people really like them. So let me know down below in the comments, should I put a skin on this Komodo or not? Now let's talk about some of the negatives. And one of the biggest negatives for me is the price for accessories. Everything that you buy that is for the red Komodo is gonna have a red tax on it. So it's just gonna be a little bit more. Side handles, rails, top handles, media, it's all just gonna be a little bit more expensive because it's for the red Komodo. It is a little annoying, but once you start building your items out, then you don't have to constantly keep buying stuff. And I guess it does stop me from constantly buying stuff and rigging things up and changing things up. Because it is so expensive, I stick to what I have and I make it work. 
So another pretty big negative for me is the media options. I have to use CF Express cards and one, they're super expensive. So my one terabyte was about $500. And if I lost that and had to replace it, another $500 for just a memory card is just crazy. And two, they don't work with any other of my cameras. So it's just dedicated to the Red Komodo. As of right now, I only have the one terabyte, but I probably do need to get another 500 or 250 just in case I need a backup. But as of right now, I've been able to work with just the one terabyte. But again, I wish I could use it at least switch it out and use it on my FX30 or other cameras. But unfortunately, it's stuck just to the Red Komodo. Another negative is just how big our 3D files are. And I get it, they have to be big files. It's basically a bunch of data that you're recording so that you can edit it and post. I'm just used to working with FX3 and FX30 footage where a YouTube video with the B-roll would be anywhere from 50 to 100 gigs. Now a YouTube video is probably 100 to 200 gigs and that's just the Red Komodo footage. I then have B-roll footage and everything else. So it's a lot more to work with. It's one of the compromises you just have to accept if you want that amazing red raw. It is nice to be able to push it around that much. I just wish it could be a little smaller, even with the extra low quality. I'm the videographer and editor for the Sin City Bartender. So there's days where we shoot two, three, four, five, six YouTube videos in a day. And at the end of the day, I need space. So I back them up to my hard drive. And then if I wanna edit, I usually try and work off the hard drive by creating proxies overnight and then the next day I start editing. However, if I finish that edit and I wanna do a second one, again, I have to create proxies, wait two or three hours, and then I can start working on another video. Now, that wasn't the best workflow. So one thing that I've, I'm doing now is I'm dropping one or two YouTube videos onto my computer or the hard drive and editing off that. And now I don't have to create proxies, everything plays back pretty smoothly and I don't have any issues editing. The only time it does drop any frames is if the color grade is on and usually that doesn't happen. It may drop a frame or two and then be fine. But if I do have any noise reduction on there, then it's just not playable. But I usually don't edit with the color grade. I just every, edit everything raw and then I add the color grade at the end. So it's a solution I found. It's still not perfect, but it's definitely better than creating proxies overnight. So our 3D files and how flexible and amazing they are were in the positives, but they're also in the negatives. Just because they are so flexible, it's so easy to start pulling them back and forth and trying to push the colors and everything that you can easily mess up the grade. So with the Red Komodo, you get a really good image out of camera and typically you don't have to do a lot of adjustments, especially for me where I work in a dedicated studio with studio lights, everything's set up perfect. So there's not much that I have to do. And I, I found myself trying to push it too much and ruining the image. So one of the negatives is it gives you too much flexibility, but that's, that's on the editor, that's not on the camera. A few other small little negatives, not a big deal. The startup time, it usually takes about 20, 30 seconds for it to start up. So if you're someone that needs to have a camera just turn on instantly and start recording, that could be an issue. For me, it's not. I work in a studio, I load up the camera, go do something else, and then just have everything ready. So again, not a big deal for me, could be a big deal for you. So. Another annoying little thing that again, not a big deal, you have to black shade the camera. So if there's a drastic change in temperature or you're changing formats or frame rates, you have to black shade the camera or you could have some issues with the images. Again, I work in a studio, so I have time to do all of that. But if you're someone that just needs a camera on the go quickly, fast, you probably want something like the FX3 to the FX30. Again, not a big deal, but something you need to consider. Another thing that's again on that list of annoying little things that aren't a big deal, SDI protocol. There's a certain protocol you have to follow to attach SDIs onto the Red Komodo so that you don't blow up the port. So that's when you attach the monitor. Again, just watch some YouTube videos, you get used to it. But it's one of those things that you have to think about when you're recording with the Red Komodo versus the FX3, FX3. You just plug in the HDMI and you're set to go. 
Last thing could be seen as a negative. The red Komodo is definitely overkill for YouTube and social media. Now you don't need a red Komodo, but it is fun to use it and have the R3D files and everything that it offers. However, you don't need a red Komodo. FX3 is perfect. FX3 could be overkill as well. FX30 is like the perfect little camera for YouTube and social media. And that's what I use. So as of right now, I have the red Komodo. I may switch out, sell it, get a different camera eventually. But as of right now, those are the pros and the cons of using the red Komodo in 2024 for social media and YouTube. Appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, leave them down below and I'll try and answer them. See you in the next one. Peace.